Hey guys, back for part two. So this is going to be our knitting segment where I am going to go over some of my finished objects and some of the things I've been working on for the last few weeks since I last talked to you. Um, and I'm pretty sure all of these are new finished objects that I haven't shown to you as finished before. Um, the only one I'm not hundred sure about is this one. So we'll start there. <laughs> so this is the little forager sweater. And this is the children's sized version of my forage sweater, which is um, out now and available on Ravelry. That is the adult sized version of this one. Um, or rather, this is the child sized version of the adult one that I designed um, and published last year. Um, that was knit out of Lavender Loon yarn on her um, really, really gorgeous um, MCN DK base. And this one is knit out of equally beautiful and squishy yarn by Duck Duck Wool. And I love Sandra's yarn. This yarn is so soft. It was so lovely to knit with. The finished object feels like really substantial, but not like too much either. It blocks beautifully the yarn. It's so lovely. And I can't remember the exact names of the colorways, but this beautiful like deep red, a lovely sort of um, more yellowy green, this beautiful yellow and a lovely like grey as the neutral colour. So I followed the same colour palette as I had for my one, but obviously out of Sandra's yarn and um, in slightly brighter red. Uh, mine uh, was out of a slightly darker red. I don't have my sweater with me right now actually, because um, Sam has it at the moment as a uh, booth sample, um, but she's gonna be sending it to me. So I'm hoping that eventually, um, one, I'm hoping to get pictures of Layla in this, after her birthday once the weather picks up a little bit and also I'm hoping to be able to get pictures of both of us wearing our sweaters together. Um, hers I did a more normal sort of length. The The adult version is designed to be a little bit more cropped and has a high low hem. I was thinking about doing that for this one and I do have the instructions for that in the pattern but I opted to just do a standard hem um, and a normal and a full length rather than cropped. Um, for a child just because I think that's more appropriate and more practical um, But I wanted to do it full length, but with still with a high low hem But I was running out of the red yarn I had underestimated how much red I was going to need for the size and I knit this in the four to six year size Which looks absolutely ginormous, but will probably fit her quite nicely But it will still be big on her but with room to grow but not it won't be swimming on her uh, She's about the size of a four-year-old so um, So yeah some of the sweaters that I've knit her in the two to four year size still fit her, but they fit her like perfectly now. And once she grows a little bit, they'll be too small for her. So I am starting to knit her sweaters in the four to six year size because she just won't stop growing. I don't know who told her that she can keep growing, but apparently she didn't get the memo that she has to stay the same size as a baby. And she just keeps growing and getting bigger. And I'm not entirely happy about it. Anyway that's a whole other story but um so that's the little forage the little forager little forage little forage i think i call it a little forager sweater and that's currently in testing so hopefully once that test knit is finished i think sometime in end of march early april i think that one finishes and um i have had a chance to take photos of layla in her sweater then um that will be ready to be published uh, another finished object that I have, and this one was finished on my um, on the plane back from New York, pretty much. And then I had a couple of rows left to do, and then some seaming. And that is this cowl. This I am so happy with how this cowl has turned out. I'm actually trying to find where the seam is because I can't remember where I seamed it now, which is probably a good problem to have. I think I generally don't know where it is. Anyway, um, it is seamed somewhere in the round. I just can't find it, which is probably a good thing. Um, it means it's nice and seamless. Um, but yeah, so this is my own design. The gray background color is a farm yarn from, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the company, the name of the farm now, but it was one that I picked up at Rhinebeck, my first Rhinebeck. Uh, it's a Cormo DK weight. And the rainbow yarn is my own hand spun. It is hand spun from some carded Corydale that I turned into Rolex and spun into a self-striping sort of rainbow 
gradient, which I'm so excited about how that turned out. That was definitely a much thicker yarn. That was more of a Aran weight yarn. So I mixed the yarn weights of this one and it turned out perfectly fine, DK and Aran weight. And yeah, it's, a, it's the perfect sort of single loop length. And it's nice and cozy and warm and it's perfect because you can either have it standing up and sort of covering your face a bit but not being so claustrophobically tight or you can pull it down and have it sit nice and snug and it will keep this area really warm um, to the point I would argue that if you're walking around a lot that it might even be too warm because <laughs> it's so it's color work and it's double thickness so it's like four layers of fabric it's so thick um, and yeah so it's just really nice and actually having it a bit open really helps because it's so warm um, but yeah I'm really happy with that and I used up every last scrap of the hand spun which was perfect um, I think I literally had this much left at the end so it worked out pretty much perfectly and I'm really happy with that and I will write up this this design at some point I have a plan <laughs> I have an idea for a collection of color work cowl patterns in a variety of different shapes and sizes and ideas and that's all I'm going to say on that one because I don't want to give too much away. That was one of the things I've been hoping to work on this last month, but obviously I haven't. <laughs> so that is going to be on the cards soon, hopefully, and I'm really, really excited about it. Um, another finished object is this sweater. And this at the moment is being called whoop, the igneous sweater, like, the ig like an igneous rock, because the colorway, uh, the yarn is by Barnyard Knits and the colourway is called granite and so I kind of thought I'd go with a rock theme and um, I decided to call it igneous and so this one is the one um, I really love it it's a drop shoulder shape it's actually the same sort of construction as my Parisian dreams which is the one that I'm currently wearing so it's bottom up and it has a drop shoulder construction um, and yeah and this one is more of a fade of pattern rather than a fade of colours. So you start at the bottom with the pattern where it's quite dense. And you can see it's all over. And then as you go up, the pattern sort of thins out a little bit. And then you end with it being in stockinette at the top. And because of the changing pattern, the gauge changes. So you're actually changing needles throughout to compensate for the changing gauge to maintain gauge, if that makes sense. Um, otherwise, you would be having, there would be far too much maths involved in adjusting needle the stitch counts and stuff like that across the sizes. I wanted to keep it simple and easy and not complicated, but there are very specific instructions in the pattern on how to swatch correctly, so you can get an accurate idea of what needle sizes you need um, for you. And, and yeah, I'm really excited about this one. This one is also currently in testing. And again, hopeful that this will be ready to release mid to end of April is kind of my goal for this one. Um, and the hug, the hug Shrug is also currently in testing. I don't have that here to share with you right now, but that's also in testing. I still need to photograph it uh, for the pattern, but again, that will probably be coming out um, either towards the end of March or possibly in May. I kind of need to spread the releases out a little bit, otherwise they're all going to be like in the same week. But that'll be sometime in spring as well. Um, and the other two things I have to show you are vanilla socks. This was a pair of vanilla socks out of some Reggie yarn that I was working on on my trip to New York. Plain, simple, standard pair of vanilla socks. 2.25mm um, needles. I use my Chagu needles. And I used my vanilla sock pattern with my um, mini heel flap gusset adjustment and Gemma short row and I do that in garter stitch. So that's just knitting every row rather than um, purling the wrong side rows. And then, and you can get my vanilla sock pattern for free or you can get, which is, I think it's called Mina's two at a time socks, or you can get Mina's vanilla sock recipe which includes instructions for my specific heel pattern. The free one just has a standard wrap, wrap and turn short row heel included in it. But um, the other one is only a couple of pounds and it includes the heel instruction. Or any of my other patterns, socks from the last three years have the same heel instruction in it as well. And this is another pair of vanilla socks. I do not know the yarn company 
or the colorway name for this one. It did not have a ball band. I lost it at some point and I never lose my ball band. So I don't know what happened with this one. I just knew it was a sock yarn. And um, oh, there we go. And yeah, that's how this one turned out. Same as the other one, 2.25 vanilla sock with the garter heel flap and gusset and a mini heel flap and gusset adjustment and um, heel, German short row heel. So there we go, two more vanilla socks for the gift pile. Um, I have actually knit two more pairs, well, one more pair of socks and another that's almost finished, but those are upcoming designs. I am planning a new sock collection and I'm trying to decide whether I want to release it as a club or as an all in one collection. So let me know, would you be interested in another sock club or would you rather I just published it all as a collection straight away or should I do it as a uh, as a club but you can you can buy the patterns individually or as a club from the get go rather than waiting until the end. Let me know what you prefer. I haven't really put too much thought into that yet other than I'm just designing some more socks now. I kind of, um, I wouldn't say burnt out but I kind of moved away from that for a while just because I was interested in pursuing other ideas and now I'm kind of coming back to it and um, got some inspiration and some ideas for that. So let me know what you guys think. Um, so that's it in terms of finished objects. Um, I, most of these were either almost finished or very close to being finished before I got sick. So um, I really haven't knit a whole lot while I was ill, to be quite honest. I did a lot of spinning though. <laughs> There's a lot of spinning, but, um, but yeah, anyway. <laughs> Um, I, I've also been doing some swatching for some design ideas, one of which, actually two of which, I'm not going to show you now because I kind of want them to be a secret until the design's a little bit more progressed, as in cast on. <laughs> um, <coughs> I do have this swatch, which I, it, it's just interesting because it just shows like different perspectives and things. And this is some yarn that I got from Farmer's Daughter's Fibre from Candice uh, for a design idea that I have. and I. And I really love the sort of heathered effect of the colours from having a different... Um, so the purple is her Pishkun, in, uh, which is a DK weight yarn. It's, um, I think it's 100%. I think it's Rambouillet. I think I'm pretty sure it's Rambouillet. So it's beautiful and bouncy. And I wanted to pair it with her Odang base, which is a um, Surya alpaca silk, I believe. Uh, I know it's Surya alpaca, so it's kind of like the alpaca version of mohair silk. And um, and I wanted to do it in a different colour, so you'd have this sort of like heathered effect with the colouring. And this was the original stitch pattern I was going to go with. And I qu quite like how it looks, but I think it's a little bit hidden. So when I did the swatch afterwards, I turned it around and I was like, you know what, I quite like it on the wrong side. Um, it's not quite a bobble, it's not as 3D as a bobble, but it definitely stands out more. And so I think this is what is going to be the right side of the finished garment. Um, and yeah, so I'm quite excited by that idea. You'd be knitting it, with, oh, it actually wouldn't matter because it's going to be a cardigan, so there's going to be purling no matter what you do. Um, but this is going to be the right side, and I'm really excited about it. Um, so yeah, and that's that one. And the other two swatches I have to show you, one is from the Loop yarn that I got from VKL, which you would have seen in part one, so I re-swatched that one for that sweater. And then this is the yarn I got from Barnyard Knits, which again I showed you in the VKL um, haul that I that I got. And this is it swatched up in a fisherman's rib swatch. And also to see how it would look if I had like a solid um, edge. I'm not 100% on how this finishing looks on this one. So I'm gonna rethink the edging on that. But otherwise, that's what this currently looks like too. And that's it for what I've been knitting on. I think this segment's been quite short, to be honest, a bit shorter than I thought it would be. I thought I'd have more to talk about, but I guess not. The next segment is going to be much bigger. It's going to be the spinning segment, but I'm probably going to stop and record that tomorrow just because um, I spent a long time recording today and my voice is getting tired and I have some other things I need to get on with. So I will come back tomorrow to finish up this podcast with part three, the knitting segment. So thank you so much. Sorry, the spinning segment. It'd be good if I got my words straight. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me um, this far and I will see you guys tomorrow.